All right, so one video on cults and mind control and brainwashing because it's a fascinating topic to me because of um, you know an experience I've had where there's a link in the uh, there's a link in the description. I made a few videos for this article I've written. Right, and this article is about basically how I worked with a couple of life coaches called the Soul Doctors who presented this very spiritual, holy, you know, clean image, and then ended up being some of the most manipulative, abusive, toxic people that I'd say I've ever met. And I fell for it. I was gullible. I, I'm responsible for the decisions I made. But I was so toxic. It was so toxic. And the, like I said, if you want to read this, the full story, the link in the article to the article is in the description below. I made another video about it where I kind of went into some of the things they said. But very, very manipulative. And a lot of their strategies and, and the things that they did was, were very, well, basically exactly the same as what cults do, right? If you go, there's a great book called uh, Stephen Hassan, Hassan uh, called Combating Cult Mind Control. And you look at different cults, Scientology, I think the, he was in part of the Moonies. And uh, they, I mean, gurus do it. So spiritual gurus from yoga gurus, that kind of a thing. They're all... Into, whether they're doing it uh, in full awareness of what they're doing, I'd say a lot of them are aware of what they're doing. Some of them just have an intuitive feel for it. They may not have actually studied it. They know how the brain works, right? They know how to break. They know how to get in someone's side, someone's head. And so that's what I wanted to do in this video is make a, make a video a bit about what I've learned in the last in the last few, I'd say, years, couple of years since this, this whole experience with these people happened. Like I said, if you want the full story, there's a link in the description to the article. Um, they're called the soul doctors. But basically what happens is with cults is I think you might talk about it in this combating cult mind control. There's a few stages, but the first stage is really before they can sort of take control of your personality, before they can brainwash you or mind control you, put their own ideas in your head, they first need to break down your existing personality, right? So your existing personality, your sense of yourself, your values, your beliefs, um, your sense of being a good person, all of those things, that's a kind of protection. And before you can be become a victim of a cult or become sucked into a cult, they need to basically make you feel like who you are, it's not good enough, right? And I, I mean, religions do this. The classic example with religion is, I mean, the, the, like, to, to, like I'm familiar with Christianity, right? Because I grew up going to church. No longer do, no longer part of it, no interest in it. But if you really look at it, <laughs> you think about sin, Basically, before, before you can get people interested in your religion, you need to make them feel like there's a problem. Well, so what's a great problem? Well, you tell them that they're born sinners, right? It's not, it's not that they did one thing that was wrong and they can make up for it. No, they're born bad. That's the Christian thing. You're born evil. You don't even have a choice. It doesn't even matter what you do. It doesn't matter how good you are. It doesn't matter anything. You are born evil. And the only way that you will ever get into heaven is if you join our religion, believe in Jesus, and you'll go to heaven. Right, and so you see that what these people do is they, the, 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 the way they control you is they first make you feel like something's wrong with you. Christianity does it with sin. Uh, Buddhism and a lot of the Eastern religions, for them, it's karma. It's, it's the same basic idea, though. It's, it's instead of it being sin, instead of sin being the thing that's wrong with you, you being a bad person or something like that, the thing that's wrong with you is the fact that you've had some bad past, you've got bad karma. And you've got to work that karma off. So you better be doing good deeds or meditating or whatnot. So you see that sin and karma are basically devices to control you. First, they, if they can get you to believe that you're a sinner, that you were born a sinner, or that you have bad karma and that you have to work that off, now they control you. Because if they can get you to believe in the problem, they can then offer you the solution, right? It's a, it's, I'd say it's one of the oldest marketing tricks in the book. It's how cults uh, do their thing. It's how these coaches, the soul doctors, Cecile and Misha, uh, it's how they did their thing as well. So a quick rundown on what they did. They, they did it, I did a ceremony with them, a psychedelic thing with them, and, and they basically told me that I was three times worse than Hitler. I'd killed 20 million people in a past life. I was too dangerous. And now I had 18 million locks on my power, and I was too dangerous for them to release them. On and on it went. They told me I was arrogant, that I was dark, that I, was, I had anger issues, trust issues, a whole range of things like this. And it took me a while to realize what was happening. But now that, now that I've done my research, now that I understand some of these dynamics, what I, what I see, how I see this works is that's the soul doctor's equivalent of sin. Instead of telling me, hey, John, you're sinful, it's, hey, John, you're dangerous, you're dark, you're, you have anger issues, trust issues, you have this problem, that problem, this problem, that problem. You even have this massive karmic debt from your past life of 18 million innocent lives that you killed. And so it's basically like, you're bad, 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 bad. And if I believe that, if I start to actually take that on as part of my identity, I start to go, oh, man, maybe they're right. What if they're right? What if, what if I really am 
that bad? What if I really am evil? And then because they've created that problem, who do you think I'm going to go to for the solution? Them. Because they're the only people who, if they're the only people who know, know what the problem is, they're the only people who can fix it. And so you see what I mean? So, and then once I start to believe that and I go, oh, wow, maybe they're right. If I can really get, if I do end up getting to that point where I fully take it on and believe it, then I'm going to go, what do I do? Just tell me what to do. Do, you, do I need to be a vegan? Like, do you want me to, you know, meditate for two hours a day? Or do you, you know, what, what do you want? What books do you want me to read? Do you see what I mean? Right. So like the more I, the more I let them mess with me and make me feel like something's wrong with me, the more subservient and submissive I become to their frame. Right? So it's a, it's, a, it's a game of mind control. Like I said, it's what religions do, it's what cults do, and it's what these, uh, these two people, the soul doctors, Cecile Menison, Misha, and Misha Bauman, this is what they're doing. And the reason I want to mention it and put it into a video is because a lot of people don't know about these strategies. And I mean, the reason I got caught up in this bullshit, in this stuff, is because I hadn't read about it. I hadn't heard about it. No one had told me about it. And so I think it's really, really important that a lot of us, maybe everyone, we learn about these things. You can even see it happens in the government, with the media, with the news. There's this constant fear, 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 making you feel like something's wrong. So then they can get you to do whatever they, it, it's, they, then they can get you to do their solution. So if they have something they want you to do, they'll create a ton of fear about the alternative. And then you're going to be more likely to do what they want you to do. So you see, so much is about control. Okay. So, yeah. And you see narcissistic, if you talk about like a narcissistic romantic partner, they're doing it as well. And another, another aspect to this is they also isolate you from your friends and family, right? Because if you come under the influence of like, a, like these Cecile and Michelle, I'll use them as the example. They didn't, they, they were sort of, they kind of encouraged me not to ask too many questions of other people. Don't read too many books. Don't talk to other people about what we say. And the idea is that we're isolating you. Because if we can isolate you, every other person in your life is a potential threat to, that per, to their control, right? So for me, with Cecile and Misha, every other person in my life, my fam, my parents, my, my cousins, my extended family, friends, all of it, every other person is a threat to Cecile and Misha's power because every other person can say something that will pull me out of Cecile and Misha's frame, right? So this is another part of the control thing is they will isolate you. Uh, and this is, again, this is what cults do. This is what they do. This is what uh, the Nazis do. This is, you know, when you're trying to condition a, a dog or an animal or uh, you're trying to brainwash or break down a citizen in uh, like a prisoner of war situation. Again, there's books on this. Another book is called The Rape of the Mind, which is by a psychologist who, psychotherapist or psychologist who studied this. How do you act? How do they, how they, how do they do it? So they isolate you. And this is what romantic partners do. Think about well, not narcissistic romantic partners, very insecure romantic partners. They will, they will pull you away from your friends, discourage you from meeting probably your usual friends, seeing your family. Oh, your mom's so bad at this. Your dad's this. Or, you know, it's like there's this undermining of the other support figures in your life because the more they break those connections, the more they control you. So, I mean, it's, it's look, this is heavy stuff. It's, it's, it's not necessarily that fun to learn about. I mean, for me, it's absolutely fascinating because I've just had this, I've been through this. And I mean, it's, it's, it's extremely dangerous. If you think about the fact that people can get caught up in a cult for 5, 10, 20, 30 years, we're talking about these people who play these games are able to steal time from you that you will never, ever, ever get back. And they can go so far as ruining your relationships. I mean, ruining your entire life by messing with your head. And this is what Cecilia Misha, the soul doctors did with me. And I so I'm sharing, I'm exposing them. I'm sharing my story, uh, my opinion about what happened. Um, and, you know, I hope that, that, you know, maybe this, you know, helps you. Maybe there's people in your life that are, that are like this, or maybe hopefully if you've watched this, this far, um, learning about these ideas can help you avoid this, um, some of these problems in the future. So anyway, just a quick video. Uh, if you want the full story, go to the link in the description, read that. And, um, there's resources and different things like that in the article too. So thanks for listening.